Rumor has it that the Porsche Carrera family had a bastard child called the 996. I set out to prove the world wrong. The ugly duckling just needed some help to become a beautiful mythical beast. If Porsche ever made an RS version for the 911 Turbo, this would be it. I present you the 996 Turbo RS by EMC. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back to Empire Motor Club. This is the first vlog of 2023, and I'm going to be presenting you guys the 996 Turbo RS EMC project car. I will be talking a lot about why I chose the 996 platform over all the other generations and I will get into all of the modification process because it took us over 18 months to finally get this project together and there were a lot of moving parts, a lot of partners, a lot of shops, a lot of brands and tuners. I want to take the time to thank everyone but also show you guys, you know, what a complete project car looks like. Before I get into everything, I am at Treasure Max Baojing Qixie. They are in Nangang. Baojing Qixie Treasure Max have有一条龙的服务，他们就像汽车管家一样。那这边你可以租车位，然后甚至他们还可以帮你清洗车子、镀膜，然后还可以帮你包膜，然后他也可以帮你保养车子。那如果你想改装的话，他们也可以。But be on the lookout because EMC might have a members only private party here in this space. The 996 Turbo RS project was unveiled at Empire Fest 2022 and everyone loved it. However, a lot of people ask me why the 996 and I'm going to answer that for you guys. Uh, about 20 something years ago when I was in college, the 996 came out and it was the first water cooled engine. Uh, they did away with the air cooled, I guess, you know, it was time, but the air cooled era Porsche was actually not in the best of shape. Financially, they were in trouble. The 996 was the savior. However, it had these ugly fried egg headlights. But, you know, around 2000, 2001, uh, the 996 Turbo came out and fuck, it just shit all over the supercars. It left a lasting impression on me. So 20 something years later, when I started to look for a 996 and wanted to do a project, I specifically looked for a 996 Turbo. Why? Because the 3.6 liter water-cooled twin turbocharged intercooled engine was derived from the Hans Metzger GT3 engine. And it also was derived from the 1998 Le Mans GT1 car. So it made a lot of sense. It didn't have the IMS bearing issues and it's pretty much bulletproof by Hans Metzger. However, I knew that I needed to kind of resto mod, refurbish, rebuild, and just redo the entire car. So the search was on, and I looked for the 996 Turbo for a very long time. A little over two years ago, the car market didn't skyrocket. However, when I was looking for it, the 996 kind of bottomed out. You know, in Taiwan, it was around the 2 million NTD mark, and it was the cheapest Porsche Turbo that you could find. Luckily, I found an amazing example, no accidents, and you know what? I bought the car on the spot, and the project began. I needed to find a location and a shop that could do all the work. So I went to Tibao and Nehu, Top Gear Auto Service, they were the guys that were going to take my engine out, the transmission out, and take out all of the parts underneath the car, the chassis, and the suspension. And then I chose Sengong in Nangang to do all of the interior work. And they were also the ones that were able to help me with the body kit and the paint. And I needed to find a shop to do all the stereo equipment and then later on to do this beautiful Z Tech wrap. Once I made sure of all the shops that I was going to work with, that was when I started to contact all of the brands and the tuners and I needed to you know, call in some favors. 
So I called up Felix at Klein Innovation. Uh, the 625 Ink Canal material, my favorite exhaust material. And with a car like this, you know, it just has to breathe better, be lightweight, and it's got to sound amazing. So Klein Innovation was the way to go. And I just literally called Felix because I knew he had a lot of connections and he deals with a lot of Porsches. So he introduced me to another guy in Southern California at By Design called Sam. And I knew of Sam from different car forums and everyone always talks about how he's a legendary tuner. And I gotta say, you know, he pointed me in all the right directions, how to rebuild this engine, have all the correct parts. And when we got everything installed, uh, when we needed the car up and running, you know, Sam, he really saved the day with the tune. He was on vacation and, you know, when he went back to the hotel, he would just help us out with the tune. We would go back and forth via email. And honestly, thank you, Sam. You are the fucking man. Sam then introduced me to Tile Turbos because I wanted to do a turbo upgrade. And he also introduced me to Mark Ski Tuning. And after I started to order all of the power upgrades, I was introduced to BBI Autosport through my big brother, Sean Lee from the Purist Group. And Sean Lee helped me immensely throughout this process. You know, he gave me a lot of guidance to all the tuning stuff. And also he helped introduce me to a lot of amazing people in this community. And I just wanted to say thank you, Sean Lee. You're always gonna be my big brother. So Sean introduced me to Batim Barisha from BBI Autosport. Batim really helped me pick out all of the suspension components for this 996 Turbo because I told him that, you know, I wanted this car to be streetable, yet at the same time, I can still take it to the track. BBI Autosport hooked me up with the rear upper and lower control arms, the front lower control arms, thrust arms, bump steer, toe steer kits, uh, the drop links, sway bars. I mean, they really hooked it up with every single component I needed under the suspension. I also went with KW suspension for the V3 coilovers as well as the HLS2 because I knew that I was gonna lower the car and I needed a front lift. If your car doesn't have a front lift, go get the KW HLS kit because it's worth it. We ordered a ton of OEM parts, but there was one thing that I wanted to upgrade because we are in Taiwan, the weather, heat, humidity, it's gonna get to it. So I wanted the proper cooling mods. I went with CSF radiators and I also got the DO88 intercoolers. And with the engine, I took everything apart and rebuilt it, but I did not go with forged internals because I didn't want to push this engine to the max limit. And you know what? My tile turbos were just a small upgrade. They are just a little bit bigger than the stock turbos, but it has a wastegate. And I went with GD2 spark plugs, 1300cc injectors. We had the larger IPD intake plenums, and I want to give a big shout out to Mike at IPD. You guys are awesome to work with. Thank you very much. And we have the Markski tuning inlet pipes that are wrapped around. Those are soft tubes because of the transmission and the placement of the engine and the pipes. That was a great addition to the car. So this is a Tiptronic transmission. It was actually made by Mercedes, which is very, very interesting. Uh, I guess back in the 90s and the early 2000s, Porsche and Mercedes did share a lot of parts. However, that transmission is super robust and it could take a lot of power and torque. And we took that off, uh, we took it apart and we sent it to a transmission guy out here in Taiwan and he was amazing. And we fortified it, we made it stronger. There's not much that we could really do to the transmission, but we upgraded the torque converter and you know it's able to handle a lot more power and, and it's smoother and it shifts gears a lot better. But Honestly, it's still an old school transmission. To me, as long as it can take the amount of power that it has, that's good enough. Now to complete everything underneath the car with the suspension, chassis, you know, the next step would be the brakes. I love Alcon brakes and I love working with Alcon brakes in Taiwan. So they hooked me up with racing calipers. They are super lightweight and forged. Uh, we got two-piece floating rotors front and back, 380 millimeters in the front and 360 in the rear. It fills it up really nicely. And we have the EMC Fat5 traditional two-piece wheels, and they are gorgeous. Uh, it's period correct because, you know, back 20 years ago, we wanted to have polished chrome-style lips with a matte black 
center. Now with the tires, uh, there's a lot of choices, but I wanted to try the Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sport R tires because that was the 992 GD3 approved tire. And like I said, my setting for this car was to have street drivability as well as it being a capable track weapon. It's just good to know you have such a nice tire on the rear because I actually turned this car into rear wheel drive. I converted from all wheel drive to rear wheel drive to save weight. I took off the front axles, the differential and the drive shaft and just left the rear axles on, you know, connected with the transmission and the engine because this is supposed to be a sick project and why not? I'm kind of crazy like that. The exterior, I went with a combination. I went with a tech art front bumper, side skirts, rear wing, as well as the rear bumper. And I went with a Gambala front hood because I liked, you know, the 964 and the 993 old school style hood on it with a vent uh, on the back. And the 996 hood just didn't have it. So I wanted to be a little more old school. And I actually had a company out in Taizong called Future Design, and they really helped me out with the fenders. As you can tell, we have a small fender flare. It is not bulging, it is not too big. It's not like the RWB style, which I love. So they kind of put, you know, little dots and tacks all over the car, and they just kind of laser scanned it and it's kind of just like 3D printing. That was a really cool process to witness. You know, we had to modify the fender flares a couple times, but they got it just right and beautiful and it fit amazing. So if you guys need some custom work done or if you're looking for carbon fiber body kits, they have amazing products, future designs. The interior was all done by my good friend Anson Xiaoyang at Sengong and he does the most brilliant work. He is so detailed and that's why so many people go to his shop and that's why it's always full. We decided to go with a very special material of Alcantara. Uh, everyone knows that we are into conservation, recycling, and also, you know, ocean conservation. I wanted to do something fun. I wanted to do something different, more environmentally friendly. So I actually chose a recycled material that basically feels exactly the same as Alcantara, uh, but it's just made by plastic bottles. And I thought that was very meaningful for the project. So I went with that and I wrapped pretty much, you know, the whole center console, the dash, uh, the doors, the Recaro pole position, Abe seats. We also found this beautiful cloth that had yellow, gray, and black checkers on it. And it just matched perfectly with the theme. And it was so Porsche that I just had to get it. And we also wrapped the BBI roll cage in the back in the same recycled Alcantara material. I also went with the OEM Porsche Classic radio navigation system and it has a big screen on it. It made it more modern. It just makes everything on the interior just feel a little more updated and more homey and more comfortable when I'm driving it. But uh, back to the yellow part. I wanted something different. So I reached out to Inozi Tech Taiwan because the last couple of years I noticed that their wraps were really colorful, really brilliant and super shiny. And I realized that they had a lot of vintage style colors that I really liked. I saw something that stood out and reminded me of my very first project on EMC, which was the aquamarine blue. However, this is a little bit deeper, a little bit more green, and it's called the era green, E-R-A green. Once I saw photos of the Inozi Tech 997 RWB, I knew that I needed that color on the 996 Turbo RS project. So, I was introduced to Jerry, the head of Inozi Tech Taiwan, and we talked. Amazing dude. Thank you, Jerry, for supporting us. I gotta say, it's perfect. It's amazing. You know, um, when we unveiled this car with this wrap, it was bonkers because everyone was wowed and I was just so happy and so thrilled with the outcome makes this car even more badass and even more period correct. It makes it actually a little more vintage, which is really me. So thank you, Inozitech, and thank you, Jerry. 
and all the rap work was done at Diamant, Diamo, Jiajie Shaochen. Uh, you know, those guys are always amazing to work with. They do an amazing job, super professional. So we couple the wrap with new LED headlights as well as LED tail lights, and the car just looks brand new. And I decided to go with clear greenway tints because I wanted this car to look a little bit more vintage. I didn't want the black tints, and the clear tints just set it off. So thank you Greenway for always being there for us and protecting my car and protecting my interior. I just wanted to share the entire process with you guys. I know that this is a super long vlog and I talk so much, but there was so much that went into this project. Most of the mechanical work was done at Tibao Top Gear Auto Service. Say thank you to Xiao Liao, the owner there, and I wanted to give a huge shout out to Ta Chi Zhong Yinge Shi Fu. Aloha. I just wanted to say, you are awesome. And this is the entire process of what an entire build is. This is a truly finished project car. This is the EMC 996 Turbo RS. I'll see you guys out on the road. I'll see you guys out on the track. I'll see you guys in the Canyon Roads and at the beach and the coastline. Until the next one, we'll see you guys soon. Peace out.